As we access uh, the church, we immediately notice uh, a big uh, funeral monument crowned by the archangel Michael slaying a dragon. So uh, once you enter the church, uh, you want to take uh, a sharp right and look uh, straight up at uh, one of the most beautiful monuments here. It's a funeral monument to Ladislao di Durazzo. Ladislao di Durazzo was uh, one of the last Andreanians uh, to live here in Naples, together with uh, his uh, sister, um, Regina Giovanna, Queen Joan of Naples. On the bottom part of the monument, there are four statues uh, representing four virtues. This is another masterpiece here, a crucifixion by Giorgio Vasari. Giorgio Vasari was uh, from Tuscany. He came to Naples and stayed a while in Naples and definitely left his mark. He is known as a mannerist, someone who painted in the style of uh, the great masters uh, such as uh, Leonard, Raphael, Michelangelo of the time. Um, but anyway, um, his painting is here. It's uh, somewhat somber compared to the rest of the church, but it is in beautiful condition. This is uh, Prudence, and she is symbolically holding a snake. So here we have uh, Temperance uh, with uh, water. So Temperance is trying to say, hey baby, don't drink that alcohol. Don't drink that whiskey. One of the best things about this monument is that it's uh, sitting before the main altar of the church, but you can walk straight through it and access what is definitely the best part of uh, the church. This is a chapel called the Chapel of the Sun because it's full of light. We are greeted by another funeral monument, but most importantly, we are greeted by the most ancient floor, decorated Maiolica floor in Naples. quick uh, look at uh, this other funeral monument. The funeral monument is dedicated to Sir Giovanni Caracciolo. The Caracciolo family pretty much uh, took over the church. Giovanni Caracciolo was the official lover of uh, Queen Joan, uh, but uh, he took on too much power. He became really too powerful for the Queen, so the Queen promptly decided to murder him. Uh, she feigned illness, she pretended she was in bed ill at night in uh, the month of August of uh, 1432. Uh, he was uh, called to her room and uh, he was uh, treacherously knifed stabbed to death. So um, his body was uh, thrown from the Queen's uh, castle. He was found in his uh, pyjamas and uh, in his uh, funeral uh, monument uh, he's uh, standing up holding a dagger. So it is uh, definitely an accusation. The funeral uh, monument was ordered by his uh, son and uh, built uh, posthumously. You can see the shift uh, in style, the color of the stones has changed. Uh, we have uh, white marble and we're definitely moving towards uh, the Renaissance period. As we entered the church, we noticed uh, that painting of uh, St. Augustine. And uh, this chapel and the church was built by the order of uh, the Augustan uh, monks. So here, all along uh, the chapel, in the bottom part of the chapel, we have uh, paintings of uh, monks uh, building churches, praying, farming, and so on. The monks were indeed very industrious. 
it's quite interesting because uh, you can see uh, lots of uh, medieval and uh, renaissance uh, characters in the paintings so you can see how people uh, used to dress at the time and how colorful life actually was the second and third level of uh, frescoes is dedicated to the holy mary this here is the representation of the birth of holy mary the frescoes were executed by Leonardo da Besozzo and also by Andrea da Firenze. So um, attribution of the frescoes is quite complicated. On the second uh, level far away, we have uh, an angel announcing uh, uh, the pregnancy of the Holy Mary, Immaculate Conception. Here we have uh, the Holy Mary entering uh, the temple, being accepted by the church, so recognition for her. On the top level, I'm not sure you can see that, but uh, we have uh, the death of uh, the Holy Mary. And uh, the central fresco features the Holy Mary being crowned as a queen of heaven. These uh, frescoes are a little bit ruined, probably because uh, this is where the sun shines the most. Once you get close to the wall, you can notice how many people decided to leave their autograph on the paintings. The floor was obviously restored. There were originally more than 6,000 uh, handmade tiles and uh, the number has been reduced, but there was a wonderful work of uh, reconstruction and replacement. Obviously, when I say replacement, I mean that the tiles were taken from the church, restored and then replaced or rather reset not replaced by spurious or new tiles.